Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I am so glad to be with you here again for this week's episode, which is another interview in my series called Getting Real with Women in the Middle. Getting Real introduces you to real-life women in the middle who have made a big change and figured out how to love their midlife. Today's Getting Real interview is with someone who went from being an award-winning corporate sales director at major magazine brands to being an entrepreneur who focuses on helping women be more adventurous. I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome Stacey Newman-Weldon to the Women in the Middle podcast. Stacy, thanks so much for joining us here in podcast land. Hi, thanks for having me. This is very exciting. Fantastic. So Stacy, one of the reasons I was so interested in sharing your story was because of the huge contrast that you experienced in your life en route to finding yourself and discovering what you call emotional sobriety. So please tell me a bit about what was going on in your 40s when you hit rock bottom. Well, I had been, um, I had left my husband probably just after I turned 40 and very quickly got into another relationship and, uh, you know, thinking I, I had found somebody new and different, but it was one of those things where it was actually worse. The relationship, you know, he had a, a worse illness and it was just awful. And it's kind of where I discovered I my you know, I was very codependent. I probably should have left, you know, that I was only really separated from my husband and living on my own for about five or six months when I started in this new relationship. Right. And it took me, you know, I should have left it after three weeks and it took me five years. And <laughs> in and out of, of getting out of that relationship, there was another man who showed up, you know, his uh, a guy who likes to think of himself as the knight in shining armor coming in to rescue the, the lady. And I was at a point in my life where I was like, I wanted to be rescued because it was never about me. It was always about everybody else, you know? And so it was like looking everywhere outside for, for help. And, and when that relationship on top of the already bad one went sour, I finally, that's when I hit rock bottom. It was a, like a relationship rock bottom. You would think leaving my husband would have been it, but. That's so interesting. It was like two things in a row that, that built up kind of. Three, three, yeah. Leaving three. My ex and, then, and then the new boyfriend of five years and then the one on top of that that tried to rescue me from the bad relationship. <laughs> wow. So, and when that, you know, the knight in shining armor, uh, wasn't as shiny as he, he came across, you know, probably one way to put it. <laughs> um, I realized the problem was me, you know, it's like, well, who am I attracting um, all this, these men who are so awful for me? And I was just so miserable. So I was probably in my mid forties about then. And that's when I finally started going to see a therapist to, to try and help, you know, it felt like, you know, like climbing out of, like it did, it felt like I hit rock bottom and it's like, how am I going to climb out of this hole? And my first step was going to see a therapist. And I think, you know, I started out, I was seeing her, you know, almost two times a week or something. And it was, uh, honestly, it was like, I was at such a, such a mess. I wish I could have seen her every day. So many of my clients talk about that, that when you're in a funk, you can't even see your way out like it's just impossible to see anything clearly you're just in the negative spin of why is this happening and you don't know what to do and and kind of in that that perspective of uh, what we like to call emotional childhood when it's just so easy to blame other people rather than taking full responsibility for it, the results that you're creating in your life right you know like they say ignorance is bliss but it's not <laughs> right <laughs> you know and so at my therapist's suggestion, she actually had me start going to Al-Anon, which is the 12-step program for people who are not the alcoholic, but related to an alcoholic, impacted by an alcoholic. And it was in that, that um, program that I discovered the book, 
codependency no more. And so it was like, you know, my first meetings at Allen on all I did was sit there and cry. <laughs> and I read the book Codependent No More and I saw so much of myself in that I cried even more. You know, but it was like I needed those steps to keep going. And, you know, so I was I was doing, you know, the twelve step program and then I was doing that and uh, you know, honestly, I was trying to do almost anything to, to make myself feel better. And from that 12-step program, I actually found another one, which is called Adult Children of Alcoholics and Other Dysfunctional Parents. And throughout all these different methodologies, you know, the two programs and my therapist and all the other things I did, my parents aren't alcoholics, but it turns out my father's a narcissist. And we won't go into the, the trigger that we've had since last November of, of narcissists being prominent. But, narciss- but narcissism reflects a lot of the chaos that, that alcoholics have. So it turned out, you know, like, like we were just saying, one of the things you were saying, I learned in the, during my recovery, the thing about taking responsibility for myself. It's like the old finger, the finger you know, when you're pointing <laughs> at somebody else, look at the three that are pointing back at yourself. And that's where it's like, instead of blaming him or him or him, I had to go back and look at what was in me that was like attracting all this, this chaos, you know, why did I want chaos in my life? And I, besides the the programs, I also started trying alter, you know, alternative, you know, woo woo kind of thing, like tarot card readings. And that led to finding a metaphysical store where the, the woman, the store owner had psychics and intuitives show up and there was even one channeler who showed up and, and they all helped me, you know, shift my mindset in one way, but each one of them was, it was, uh, its own adventure. So, you know, I was trying all sorts of things to get through recovery as well as knowing that the only way through is through, or the only way out is through. So it's like, I knew I had to feel all those dark feelings that I had buried in the past, let them come up and out. But at the same time, I'm like, well, what's going on? Who is this? And who am I? And well, that's the one thing that stood out so much when, uh, when I was reading about you and when we had our little pre-interview was when you said that um, you didn't even understand that you had a playful attitude. And that playful attitude, it sounds like, has been the thing that's really directed you forward into your whole new life and career. So what was that like when you started to see this essential part of who you were coming through kind of like whispering to you <laughs> well it, it did start it is actually the one of the alternative you know one of the woo things i did was see this channeler she's a, a woman who calls herself white buffalo woman and she's actually it's pretty amazing to see her and one of the pieces of advice that she gave me because she channels not only what the woman eve doesn't also besides white buffalo woman is is the spirit that she channels through but other spirits come through to talk to you kind of through her through them and so one time i was having a session and and archangel michael came to me and you know i guess his his advice was to take myself on adventures and I had to go back because, you know, I, I sat with that. Well, I'm like, adventures. I can't go, I can't go backpacking in Nepal. I've got kids. I've got, you know, work and I've got to take care of this and that. And then, so I, I finally asked, like, how can I have adventures? So I finally went back and um, it really, the advice was clarified. It was, it doesn't have to be backpacking in Nepal. It can be just try new things, you know, where you are. It's all about, like finding a fear and facing it. So I started this thing I call Adventure Wednesdays, you know, where, um, and partly by the time I started doing it, I was recovered enough. I was out of those relationships. I was still discovering who I was. And I, I realized I needed to find out what was fun for me because being codependent, I always took on whatever my partner thought was fun. I was like, oh, that's fun. Okay, I'll do that. Instead of saying what, I wanted to do. Oh, that's so, that's such good insight. So that's what I started to, to try and discover through my adventure Wednesdays. And it's on Wednesday because that was the day I didn't have my kids, you know, so I could go out after work and do whatever. And the first time I did it, all I did was just walked a different route from my office to Grand Central where I commute out of. And 
you know, instead of the normal way. And so since I walked a different way, you know, I looked up on a different side of the street in the buildings. I noticed how pretty they were. And then I found a new restaurant that looks so cute. And so the next week I took myself to that restaurant and the intention I had was I'm going to meet somebody here. You know, I'm going to sit at the bar and I'm going to talk to somebody and I'm in sales. I'm used to talking to people, you know, in my corporate life, I, I was sales and nominated and all that stuff, but it was way different when it was like for myself, you know, <laughs> I, 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 the only person I talked to was the bartender. And so I was like, Oh, it was an utterly, you know, an utter, utter fail. But I learned from that failure. I was like, all right, I'm not going to go to a bar to try and meet people. And it's not that fun. <laughs> other things. So that's where I started. You know, I found a place that had all these unusual courses. I took belly dancing, which, you know, was fun because that helped me feel more comfortable in my body. Because if you've ever been to a belly dancing class, they're not all skinny fit people. They're, you're supposed to have good curves. You know, and it's like, oh, all right, I feel much better. You know, it's like, and each little adventure built on the next. So it would like, you know, like baby steps to building confidence and learning how to trust myself and knowing what I liked and, you know, being able to give myself the freedom to try something new and do it, do it, like you said, in a playful way, but with like an adventure attitude, like, okay, every challenge is a lesson to be learned. So I, and hopefully, you know, I wanted to have fun while I'm learning, even if I'm facing a fear, you know? No, I totally love that. But there's a big leap between you having these little adventure Wednesdays and you starting a business that's focusing on helping other women becoming more adventurous. So what the heck happened? Where did you get that idea? Well, it, it, it was kind of slow in coming. I mean, it, it, I, I posted about my adventures every Wednesday and it turned out a lot of my friends really liked it. And one time I didn't post because I had been doing something really dreary, which was, you know, applying for co college financial aid. <laughs> and when my friend reached out and said, what happened? What'd you do yesterday? I, that was like a, a flip for me. It was like, oh, I don't have to look at it as dreary. I can say I'm learning something new. I'm learning how to, you know, do college financing. And uh, so all of a sudden it was just like, it, it was like a, another one of those lights that went off. And, and it was actually, you know, about five years ago, it'll be actually five years in June, that I took myself out on an adventure to a speed date in a yoga studio. And that's where uh, it was very unusual and people were right in my age range. And there was like all these things. I was like, I knew it was something I wanted to try, but the whole, you know, that movie Hitch where, with Will Smith where, you know, the whole idea of speed dates in a bar was just like, eh. It just felt greasy and slimy or whatever. But in the yoga studio, it'd probably be a higher class of guy, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, and, it, and it was on a Wednesday. So that was the clincher. I was going to try it. And I went and I had fun and I got stories out of it. And out of all the people there, there was really just one guy I kind of liked. And I had to let it go because when I left, he was like sitting off and laughing with someone else. And I'm like, all right, fine. This isn't where I'm going to meet, you know, but haha, I've got a great story about, you know, oh, that weird girl on the other side of the, the room, you know. And um, lo and behold, the next Monday he reached out and we've been, you know, together ever since. And he was the one that really liked my idea about Adventure Wednesdays because I kept doing it, even though I was dating him, I kept going and taking myself out. And he bought a URL for me so I could start blogging and sharing my stories. So I started doing that slowly and it just sort of started taking traction. And a year and a half ago, I got downsized. I honestly felt like that was the universe telling me it's time to take this to the next step, you know? And I didn't know, I still didn't know a whole lot about blogging and all that stuff. So New York also, I live in New York and they, the, the unemployment program has a thing where they, they will give you the, your unemployment benefits if you start your own business, but you also have to prove you're learning. So I sort of distracted myself really from my business by taking all these courses that could help with the business. And after I finished that, I realized I really can't make money just doing a blog what can I do? And so I hired a business coach and together we actually discovered 
what I really like doing is inspiring others to take themselves out on adventures, to help them learn that life isn't hard, it's fun, and it doesn't happen overnight, but if you just start, you know, you end up having a, you know, having a lot more fun and excitement in your life. Oh, a hundred percent. It fits so well with the regret proofing work that I do because nobody will regret not having regrets. Right. And the thing that is such a stopper for all of us is fear. And that's one of the reasons I love your business idea so much because it feels kind of like an antidote to fear. Yeah. And fear is just so common with so many of my clients. It can be so scary to do new things. And so I was wondering, I know you have this freebie, 10 tips to develop an adventurous attitude. Tell us a little bit about that. Maybe your top tip. Yeah, I, I developed the, the top, my, my top 10 tips. Basically, it was, it was an inspiration because I wanted to know how, you know, it was like I had to go back and look at my own life and see what were the things that really helped me move along. And so that's why I have, you know, the 10 tips. It just sort of naturally flowed out. But really the best tip for, for helping other women to start is to start small. I mean, you're not going to change your life doing one thing once. It's the habits that you develop over time. So if you start small and you say, I did this, so now I can do this. You know, I can take myself out to a restaurant alone, so now I can go out and try dance class alone and be okay with it. And then you've done the dance class and then you can go out and try the next thing. You know, it, it, it all builds on each other. So, and then when you take your fear and chunk it down into smaller bites, it doesn't seem as fear, you know, as, as overwhelming. Totally. And, and really fear is just another emotion and all emotions are created by our thinking. So what I like to help my clients with is to really take a look at what thoughts are creating the fear. And I think you touched on it. It's doing things alone. I'm afraid of what? I'm afraid I'll be embarrassed. I'll afraid people will think I'm weird. I'm afraid to be in there by myself. And one of the things that I uh, teach is just to ask yourself a three-letter word to help really understand what's going on in your brain. And it's why. Why are you afraid to do it alone? Why do you think people will think you're weird? Just to really understand, don't just accept fear as a reality in your life, to question it. Right. Just to question it and just see what's really going on in there. The analogy I always use is, is it's like a flashlight. Like you ask yourself why, and it's on the way to just shining a big giant flashlight on your brain to see what's going on up there. And they're just thoughts and thoughts are optional. Right. So fear doesn't have to be just the way it is. But when you do have fear and you follow your advice of chunking it down into tiny little baby steps, you're absolutely right. It does build confidence. Yeah, but, and action is one of the biggest things to help overcome a fear. Absolutely. I mean, see, like you were saying, like once you see the why, then you're like, okay, what can I do about it? You know? And so then it's also for me, it's like, what can I do about it that's fun? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. And, and I know um, starting small is, is great advice for most people, but you've been at this for a few years. So please, you have to tell us what is the craziest adventure you've ever been on? I've been on a lot. <laughs> well, I guess the biggest and, you know, or the craziest is I've gone to Burning Man, which is uh, an art festival that's held out in the desert. And you go out camping for a week and it goes from, you know, it's a lake bed, nothing there desert to a city of 70,000 highly creative individuals and Stacy how how old are you the first time I went I was 50 yep and this will be my fifth year so yes I will be 55 in November so oh my gosh I love it like it's one thing to do this sort of thing when you're 20 yeah 25 <laughs> yeah. but to do it at our age it's a whole different ball game I mean are you squatting how are you going to the bathroom what's going on out in the desert with the bathroom <laughs> it's a city. It is. A city. I mean, it does turn into a city. They, the Burning Man has porta bodies. Oh, okay, very good. Um, and I, <laughs> I will admit, the first year I did take the expensive way, and I went with, in an RV. I rented an RV. So and, civilized. I would definitely do that. <laughs> yeah, and I do. I do camp with a, a group. You know, there, there's like two hundred of us, and so they we have like infrastructure in our in our area. So we have like a kitchen tent set up with stoves and refrigerators 
and we have like, they call it a water buffalo. It's like a 500 gallon tank of water that gets refilled. Just in the last two years, our campus started having our very own porta potties. So we don't have to walk blocks to, to the ones that Burning Man provides. Oh, you are so fancy. Well, Stacy, I have to tell you, you're an absolute delight. How can the listeners get in touch with you? Well, my website is Adventure Wednesdays with plural, because you don't do it just once, adventurewednesdays.com. And if you sign up for the, the website there, I do my um, 10 tips is a, the freebie that I give away there. And if you want to email me directly, be adventurewednesdays at gmail.com. Okay, awesome. We'll put all that in the show notes. Stacy, thank you so much for sharing your story with Women in the Middle. One thing we know for sure, especially after your story, is that we are not alone. We have so much to learn from each other, and your story and your experiences and your business are really inspiring. So thanks so much. Thanks so much. That's it for this episode. If you like what you've heard, just head over to the Women in the Middle podcast on iTunes and leave me a review. Check out the show notes with more information and all the links at www.susierosenstein.com. While you're on my website, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you grab your copy of my free ebook, 10 Simple Ways to Bust Out of Your Midlife Funk. This will totally help you get, uh, get you going too, for sure. So let's do this, ladies. Remember, it all starts with your thinking. One totally cool, adventurous thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening.